welcome to Dramatic Pause, a Rose Theater podcast. On today's episode, we're featuring Colleen Hudson Pace, Ladarian Copeland, and Garrett Garnis. Hello there. My name is Colleen Hudson Pace. I am the director of Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed, The Rock Experience. And with me, I've got some of our fabulous cast who are also a part of this wonderful show. I'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm LD. Hi, my name is Garrett. All right, awesome. And uh, LD, you are not only an actor in this show, but also you are on staff here uh, yes. at the Rose. So can you talk a little bit about um, being, uh, what, what is your position mm-hmm. here at the Rose? And um, how is being encouraged and uh, put in shows add to the experience of uh you as well as what you can bring to our young people and our audiences. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of the teaching artist fellows here at The Rose and what that means is that we're, there's a group of um, humans who come together for a year to learn how to, all the education background, all the things that we do in education and with our fellowship we also are invited to do one or two productions in The Rose Theater, whether it's the main stage productions or the theater for very young and we also teach Saturday classes and then one like production for teens and theater and I think what I've learned and what I know is that it helps the kids I guess connect everything together because after certain shows we have the post show which is where they get like a, a 95 90 minute acting workshop with either one of the teachers here or one of the people who are in the show so it's a way for us to have them see a production of a show and then use what they've seen and incorporate it with the acting tools that we teach which are body voice and imagination and using those to relate to how the show works as well as understand how to use their own body and voice and imagination to be actors as well yeah absolutely awesome um so for the show it is a it's very silly. Um, if you're familiar, or even if you're not familiar with Mo Willems as a children's book writer, um, he has a really beautiful way of conveying, uh, like we were just kind of discussing prior, conveying these uh, big ideas in very succinct, creative ways. So, um, Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed is about a young mole, uh, Wilbur J. Mole Rat, who wants to see some change in their colony. And uh, Naked Mole Rats uh, have a very unique operation in nature as well as kind of in our story here. Um, And creating that change, putting on clothes, oh my. How scandalous. Uh, putting on clothes uh, then creates a ripple effect through the colony where uh, moles are starting to question uh, where the power and authority comes from, why we're making the decisions uh, that are being made, um, in just a very silly way. So um, both of, uh, and sorry, what characters do you play in our, uh, in our production? I play Wilbur. Wilbur. And? I play Venti. And Venti is part of, uh, tell us a little bit about Venti's life and where you live and kind of the structure of the colony. Yeah, so Venti is a more of a um, kind of a punk rock mole rat, uh, part of a group called the Starbuck Nakeds, which is hilarious because they're tall, Venti, and grande, and I didn't get that joke until we were in rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Um, <laughs> but uh, it was so interesting because he was kind of described as like an enforcer in in like just the character breakdown. But we've kind of learned so much more about all of our characters, and it's amazing. Uh, I get to play just being super silly on stage, and like get to have these serious moments as well. But then it, it all just comes from a place of like goodwill and. Everyone is so giving in rehearsals that it, we've been able to create all these amazingly fleshed out characters. Yeah, yeah, it's been really great um, as as kind of the, the person um, fostering and facilitating um, the story and being in the room with you. It's so great for me to watch um, watch you create and watch you play and being able to then look at it kind of big picture wise and saying, I think we need to save that for later, Mm -hmm. that you're letting that payoff come a little too soon, you know, and kind of being able to be like, yes, yes and. And I think that everyone in our ensemble has just been so yes and Mm -hmm. about um, uh, feedback from from me, feedback from each other, um, and I really, uh, I really do 
appreciate um, all of that work and focus. And as of today, as of this recording, we have officially done our first run through. <laughs> we are completely blocked, which means we have all of our movements down. We've got all of our choreography down. We have our songs for the most part. We're going to continue <laughs> to work on those. Um, but for, for, uh, for some kind of clarity on that, um, here at the Rose, we have a pretty short rehearsal process. Uh, we usually do about three weeks of rehearsal and then we do our week of tech, which is when all those technical elements are coming mm -hmm. and being put on. And in this show in particular, there's not a lot of complications, but there is some challenges. Uh, we have to make it rain on stage, <laughs> which is not a normal thing. Well, maybe like normal, oh, it's going to rain, you know, liquid. But in this show, it's not raining liquid, it's raining clothes. Raining clothes on stage. And we have to make it seem like uh, there's this giant, horrible, cataclysmic thing happening and r clothes are falling all over the place and there's some specific little moments that have to happen and there's gotta be big moments that have to happen. Um, and so that's been a really interesting challenge that in kind of the de design process before we even get to rehearsals, we had to really talk through with our production team and see what and how we are going to make these moments be the way they need to be and also be um, simplified in a way that's going to continue to tell the story um, as well as make our lives not miserable. Mm -hmm. uh, which has been really, really, um, really, really cool to be able to have that kind of idea and then coming into the room with y'all and being able to say, this is how this is going to happen and generally it's going to be about here. Uh, but it's also very interesting too is so much of the show feels like it's got to you know, we'll figure that out when we get it into the space. Mm -hmm. um, which I, 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 this is my first time directing on the main stage here at the Rose. I've been working here for, for five years now, um, and this is my first opportunity to direct on the main stage, uh, which is very exciting. It's, uh, but it has been kind of a challenge to think about, like, oh, I have to think about this space because I'm so much more used to oh, directing in a very like intimate way mm -hmm. um, and, and found spaces and that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh, versus like a big stage like the Rose has. So it's been a challenge for me too. And, I, and that's another thing that I really appreciate that we feel so solid in where we are actor, acting and actor-wise here. Mm -hmm. no. um, cool. Do we want to talk about some of like our favorite moments in rehearsal? Like we've had some fun oh, ones. Yes. <laughs> we've had some fun ones. <laughs> But um, yeah, what are what are some of y'all's like favorite uh, discoveries that you've had, either with your characters or just kind of like those moments of camaraderie in the cast? Um, I think I have like two that come to mind like right away. Uh, the first one was um, uh, the scene where uh, Tall and I come on stage and we're just having a conversation, oh. and you're like, and be silly with it. So. We started playing hide and seek, and then started playing ninja while doing the scene, and mm. it's like, okay, this is working. Let's just keep that going, and then potential customer, and that entire scene. Oh yeah. Kills me every single time. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to turn my mic off. They'll turn you off. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, hey. That's a word. Um, I'm actually I just like enjoying the discovery of like the journey of everyone's like character. Cause like especially like what Wilbur I realized that like Wilbur is not like trying to make people change, being like, hey, you have to yeah. do this. He's very much like, here's what I like, here's what you could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what we were discussing, how like Grandi's always very like, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. While Wilbur's like, well, you could do this. This is what I like to do, but you could do this. Mm -hmm. And so I like that kind of theme of being like, hey, this is what makes me happy. This is what makes me me mm -hmm. you don't have to like change who you are to be it but here's what you could do mm -hmm. yeah so i just like really i've been really discovering that as a character myself and then i also just love grandpa and secret <laughs> secret <laughs> yes oh, they're like they're like they're like duality is so cool mm -hmm. <laughs> i love their duet it's so great so yeah yeah and it's really fun um watching especially those those characters, uh, those actors track through their characters because in their situation, they don't have one singular mm -hmm. uh, character that they're playing. They're in fact playing a lot of different characters and we're working really hard to make 
uh, them different mm -hmm. and feel like there's a full colony here, even though there are only six actors in this show. Um, you know, we're fairly small in our in our cast size, but uh, it has to feel like there's a giant colony around mm -hmm. them, and that the stakes are really, really high for you know what's going to happen. Um, so I think that those two actors have that challenge of creating all those different characters. Well, then when they kind of do get to center in on their one <laughs> character towards the end of the show, you know, they have to have gone through a complete journey that we don't see on stage. Mm -hmm. um, and filling in those gaps and making it feel very connected, um, even though the audience isn't truly witnessing that journey on stage. And that's something that I appreciate, that each one of you as actors have been very, very thoughtful about whenever you're off stage, it feels like you're still filling in those gaps mm -hmm. of, uh, of discovery. Like, Garrett, you were talking to me um, about how you and Tall kind of discovered that you were you know, siblings, yeah. and that before a kind of a final, one of the final moments uh, to help with kind of this shifting that needed to happen, that maybe you and your sibling were talking to each other and like kind of coming to some ideas and, you know, yeah. it's just really cool to be able to have as a director, again, to like have your actor come to you and be like, hey, I filled in this gap. I'm like, great, that's less <laughs> what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so so that that's super it's super great to see and that's what that for me is my favorite moment is I, I think I've mentioned it about seventeen thousand times in the room as well as probably on this, uh, about how grateful I am to have an ensemble that is truly um uh, truly just so giving in their in their focus, in their uh, silliness and their acceptance and um, the just yes and willingness to jump in and try here one let's walk backwards for this or let's you know like just having you do for a defend for game of defender yes like oh, oh wait let, today we had a moment where um, I was having some I was having a uh, in one particular part of the show. It's actually the opening of the show, and yeah. I, I was a little. I did this on purpose, where uh, I wanted it to kind of be the last moment that we that we look at, because I wanted to have, have let you guys have some of, um, ability and authority to take some of the steps and choreo that have been that are going to be through the show mm -hmm. and be able to put them into that opening in a, in your own way. Mm -hmm. um, but to help out with this one moment, I was really struggling of how to articulate it. And so we had to just like stop blocking and stop working for a minute and just play a game uh, that was going to maybe help clarify some things and then come back. And I, as we came back, I'm like, I have no idea if that helped us, but at least got us out of it. At least got us out of our own heads and getting into the space here. So. Oh, and I think that really helps a lot, too, but even with me, like, as you said, me being involved in the show and how that affects the staff. I think even having a teaching artist and as a director helps us understand how we can use incorporate our performance with our education. Mm -hmm. How that game is an easy way to show an audience, hey, this is a game that we play, but it makes sense to work in a into a rehearsal process. Here. So I really appreciate like what you all what you always bring, especially like we're question of the day and like having our list of like our list of rules and ideas. That really helps create a formula of family that I haven't really gotten a lot when I was in like college or in doing other shows. I never had like a sit down, let's talk, let's be, let's figure out our plan. Mm -hmm. And so I really am thankful for that because I feel like that step and your your philosophy of directing and teaching helps create the show so amazingly. Thank yeah. you. Like Thank having you. the core oh, yeah. <laughs> having the core values and just being able to establish that kind of like day one and being able to continue to add mm -hmm. is really nice. Because it's just one of those things that's like, you know, it's every single one of those things is important to us. And then if something new comes up, it's not like we just can't be like, oh, well, we're not going to do it. We say yes and mm -hmm. just to everything. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it away, Oh my gosh. The show is ruined. <laughs> um. Cool. Uh, what what are some things that you are looking forward to when we get into like tech and performances? <laughs> oh. 
Because both of you, so uh, Garrett, you may, you're you not on staff here, but you have performed here before. Mm -hmm. um, so both of you have been on the stage before and have mm -hmm. in, encountered and experienced the types of audiences that we have. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and so you have kind of that understanding of... Um, of how it's a little bit different mm -hmm. performing for our audiences than necessarily um, just a typical theater going audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like something geared for just just adults. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm excited about is to see the reaction from the audience with the kids because I've always been like, as you said, in productions where literally like people are just sitting down watching you perform and you just clap after each number. But I feel like with this show, it's very like immersive or <laughs> innovative. Or, like, what? <laughs> You immersive nothing. Um, <laughs> just like hoping to get the crowd involved, so like hopefully like and like in the middle of why not you hear you see kids jumping up and like dancing. Mm -hmm. Or when we go out into when we do something and maybe the audience is also gonna react to it as well. So I think I'm really excited because like I know that it's just we're used to always like sitting down and just watching while this is a very like no, you can play with us. Come mm -hmm. stand up, come cheer, come yell at us and say why not with us. Just and rock out. Yeah. I'm Rocking really out is encouraged that. in this show. Um, well, I always love tech, and like, I don't know why, I've always been a big fan of tech, so like, I'm super excited for next week. Um, I have a shirt. Uh, it's next Saturday. Next Saturday, yeah. That's what I Sorry. mean. <laughs> Quit stifling my creativity. <laughs> uh, no, I always wear, like, a special shirt to tech, and I'm gonna do that again. I'm excited uh, to see the show. It's gonna be right. Um, but then, uh, some uh, kids that I work with at school um, have actually talked about like coming and seeing the show. Mm -hmm. And I'm really super excited for them to see it because uh, just directing them, they haven't really been able to see me act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also like if, and I don't know how big of a chance there is, but like if some of them are like kind of down in the front rows when mm -hmm. we start doing certain things, yeah. I'm just gonna be like, ah! yeah. <laughs> and I'm just so excited for them to see it. Yeah. So Garrett, we uh, we know what LD does in the daytime. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you, what do you do when you're not acting in no. a show? Uh, I'm a para at Loveland Elementary. Uh, I've been with them. This is my first year with them. Uh, assistant directed for them last year with their show that they did, directed this year's show. And I've been really enjoying it there, so much to the fact that I've uh, decided to get a teaching degree out of out of that job, <laughs> which I'm so excited for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I work with uh, the special education uh, kids and it's awesome because uh, one of my third graders shortly after uh, we like had auditions for this show. Mm -hmm. I just went to school one day and like he was reading a Mo Willems book and I was just like, <gasps> I was so excited. It was, it was a sign. It was. I was like, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it made me super happy. Oh. I was so pumped. Yeah. Yeah. So excited. I'm just very excited to see all of these elements come together and the beautiful work that's being done in the room being added on to the beautiful work that the production team has been working on and putting putting together. Um, I'm just very, very excited to just see it mm -hmm. um, all, all come into one story, um, serving that one storytelling it in the best way that we know how as, as a group of, of theater makers. Mm -hmm. um, I have some mole rat facts. Mm. Naked mole rat facts, if you will. Um, then I'm gonna quiz my naked mole rat cast to see if they know these things. Some of them you might, some of them you might not. Mm. Because I don't know if you know this, but naked mole rats are very interesting creatures. <laughs> um, if you don't know what they look like, you can Google them if you want. Uh, they're interesting. And they have a, a very interesting way they go about life. Mm -hmm. So, naked mole, rat, naked mole rat facts quiz. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. How this will work is I'll ask the question, and you'll both get an opportunity to answer. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay. So, number one. 
How long do naked mole rats live? Um. You go first. <laughs> um, between eighty five. No, 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 no. I want to say like human years, because they're like, like yes, hu years, human years of revolutions around the sun. <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, like six, seven, sixty-five to eighty. Okay, final answer? Yes, he's trying to eat. Okay, what do we got? Uh, 30, I think. Garrett is correct. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually very uh, abnormal for naked, uh, for, for creatures of their size. Oh, so yeah, typically, uh, if you look at a creature that is around the same size as a naked mole rat, they don't live that long, long. Yeah. Um, but naked mole rats just because of how disease resistant they are and where they live like they live underground in tunnels um, a lot of longer, yeah, yeah. Uh, they live longer than most creatures their size gotcha. um, okay number two true or false oh mole rats don't drink water <laughs> um you went first last time, I'll go first this time. <laughs> it's 50 50, so. <laughs> I'm gonna say, just because it was a question, I'm gonna say <laughs> true, they don't need to drink water. Okay. So you're saying true or false, they don't need to drink water? So. Yes, so true uh, would be yes, mole rats don't drink water. False would be no, they need to drink water. They don't need to. Oh. I feel like. I want to say true, but also there's like under there's ground water, and they have to have like some type of like hydration. So I'm gonna say false. You're gonna say false. Mm -hmm. All right, Garrett is two for two here. Ah! Oh my gosh! Yeah. So the thing about naked mole rats is no, they don't they don't need to drink water. Though any sort the of water sure. and hydration that they need mm -hmm. is uh, through like. The things that they eat, they actually like will eat the roots of plants, and that's how they get their water. So technically, um, do drink technically, them. but it's no. through eating food. They don't drink. <laughs> they don't like need a pool of water and are like, eh, water. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't oh my like, god! Please, I don't know. We have a thing. How do I go? How do I go to bed? They're not in the pool. And they just go. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> fired! All right. That's the first time today. <laughs> Garrett's only been fired once today. That only once. That's good. That's uh, awesome. Hey, that might be a record for me. That that is. Is. Proud of you. I'm so proud of you. All right. True or false? You should both know this because I've said oh. it a couple of times. Oh boy. Um, true or false? Colonies are eusocial, meaning that they are organized like ants, bees, or termites. True. True. Yes, that's true. So, okay. <laughs> they, uh, colonies, uh, naked mole rat colonies, are, uh, like I said, eusocial, which means that they're organized more like insects than they are like mammals, and they're actually the only known mammal to be a eusocial colony, meaning mm. that there's one queen and the rest mm. are workers for that queen. Mm. Um, so, yes. Um... How long can mole rats survive without oxygen? Oh, there's there's a time limit. Yes, there is. It's more than 15 minutes, but it's less than two hours. Mm. I'm not sure I do know. Oh my gosh, is it? It didn't reach oh, said, me. Under, so underground? Mm -hmm. underground? Like, zero oxygen, right? Like, absolutely not. Um, because they can stay in, as they can stay in a state for a certain amount of time as well. Which is how long? 18, 18 minutes. 18 and minutes. You were very close with 15. Yeah. So, uh, uh, more ants, they, they can survive normally, like continuing to go through their tunnels with just 5% wow. oxygen, which is like way, way less than we would be able to mm -hmm. survive. Mm -hmm. But if there's no oxygen, then they can survive up to uh, upwards of 18 minutes, meaning that they, they basically shut down and they go into a stasis. And then when the oxygen levels get back up, then they can start moving around and stuff. So the other answer would be like, what, an hour? I would have to check. Oh, I thought you that was the end. Cool. 
<laughs> All right, and we talked about this one recently, and we actually talked about this as we came into the room. Um, true or false? Naked mole rats eat their own poop. True. 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 They do so eat their own true. poop. They do. They're not nutrients that they're able to find. They will. Um, yeah, they'll do that. Fun facts. Fun naked facts mole rats. With golly. Yeah. Well, and, and one of the things, too, is it may seem very silly, right? Mole facts. Uh, it may seem a little bit silly to someone kind of watching or listening in on this, but this is actually research that as a director and as actors, you know, we, we have to do. We have to learn about, even if we're, uh, like, playing characters that are naked mole rats, and maybe it doesn't seem like there's going to be a lot of pull, maybe, from a real-life thing mm -hmm. um, with them, but... At least for me as a director, knowing that they are eusocial, knowing that they are or the colonies are organized in this mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. and that one mole rat not doing their job the way that they're supposed to do it is actually very upsetting mm -hmm. and can totally almost destroy a colony. It would feel like then that's very that very much grounds ourselves in our story. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so even though this is like silly things to to talk about, like. They are there. It's research that we have to do as as uh, theater makers, which is pretty stinking awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. Was that the final question? That was the final one. Oh, okay. I don't have any more. Uh, we're done with our pop quiz. I'm I'm glad that I I uh, looked those up to pop quiz. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Congratulations, you won. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. But you got a fifty one. <laughs> you get a brand new. Pocket of air. <gasps> yes. Thank you. A pocket rocket. Pocket dock. A pocket dock or rocket pot. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're very excited about our uh, production of Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed, The Rock <laughs> Experience. Mm -hmm. And we hope to see you rocking there. Show opens March 27th. Mm -hmm. And we're going to rock on. <laughs> it's just an expression. Oh, okay. Sweet. I'm getting dressed. We do kind of feel like we need a hubba what in there. Oh, we do need a hubba what. Can we hubba what for you? Okay. One, two, three. Hubba what? Ha, 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 ha.